Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Happy Model Lava X Micro Brushless Toothpick Style Racing Quadcopter. In this video I'm going to go over its features, show you how to set it up, and then head outdoors and test it using two and three S type of batteries and also using two types of propellers. The Happy Model Lava X is part of the newly established and constantly growing class of toothpick quadcopters, which are basically lightweight and very powerful small quadcopters. Inside the box you can find the quadcopter, the user manual, a bag that contains a screwdriver, a hex kit driver, some extra screws and an extra canopy. In addition you are also getting two sets of 2.5 inch propellers. The one that came assembled on the quadcopter were a set of 2.5 inch HQ props and you are also getting a set of Emax Avan 2.5 inch propellers. As I mentioned before, in this video I'm going to test both options. In terms of specs, the Larva X features 1103 7000 kV motors, which can handle 2 and 3S LiPo batteries. The maximum size of propellers is 2.5 inch, and the motor shaft diameter is 1.5 mm. On the top side of the quadcopter, protected inside this molded canopy, you can find the Runcam Racer Nano 2 FPV camera. It's secured using two screws on the sides, and you can adjust its angle. Under the canopy, you can find the Happy Model Diamond VTX. It supports 40 channels, features smart audio using TBS smart audio protocol, and it has a selectable output range of 25, 100, and 200 milliwatts. This VTX also features a 720p DVR, so you can insert a micro SD card over here, and by default the camera is going to start recording, and you have to remember to stop the recording procedure before disconnecting the battery, because otherwise the recorded file is not going to be saved, so you can find the start and stop button over here. The second button allows you to change the frequency and the output power, but of course the easiest way to configure this VTX is to use the smart audio feature. On the back of the quadcopter sticking from the canopy you can find a linear antenna which is using an IPX antenna connector. Under the VTX you can find the Crazy B F4 Pro version 3 flight controller. It came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.04 and it features a 10 ampere 4-in-1 BLLES ESC. The main differences between the Crazy B F4 Pro version 3 and the version 2.1 that was bundled with the Happy Model Selfa X are that first of all, instead of supporting up to 3S LiPo batteries, the version 3 supports up to 4S LHV batteries. In addition, it features a 10 ampere 4-in-1 ESC instead of a 5 ampere one, and I think that that's the reason a capacitor on the XT30 battery connector is no longer needed. Another minor difference between the versions is that the version 2.1 features a connector for the camera, and the version 3 doesn't feature this connector, so the VTX is soldered directly to the flight controller. Just like its predecessors, the Crazy B F4 Pro version 3 comes in two versions. One that doesn't feature a receiver, and it means that you will need to add your own one externally, and another one which comes with either FROSKY or FLYSKY compatible receivers. The Happy Model Lava X is currently available only as a Banyan Fly quadcopter, which means that it's already bundled with a radio receiver. The FROSKY D8, which is also FROSKY D16 compatible, and the FLYSKY versions are the ones that feature a flight controller with an integrated receiver, and the Crossfire DSM2 and the FROSKY RXSR versions are ones that the ready receiver is connected externally. The version that I have is the one with an integrated AFR Sky receiver, and you should note that its ready range is very limited, and it's only about 150 meters. You can see the ready receiver antenna is over here, and in order to secure it to the front of the frame, I used some super UV light glue, and I think that this method is pretty good, and it's going to prevent the antenna from getting into the propellers. On the bottom of the quadcopter, you can find the flight controller micro USB port that will enable you to configure it, the XT30 battery connector, a piece of foam for soft mounting the battery, and a simple battery velcro strap. The thickness of the unibody bottom plate is 2.8 mm, its wheelbase is 100 mm, the distance between the right motor and the left one is about 70 mm, and the distance between the front motors and the back ones is about 70 mm as well, so this frame features a true X pattern. The quality of the carbon looks good, and the frame also features reinforced arms, so I don't think that it's going to break easily, and it also features these extra carbon parts 
over here in order to protect the motors. In terms of weight, the Lava X weighs 50.6 grams, so it's heavier than the BitFEV HX100, which also features a 100 millimeters frame, which weighs 46.9 grams, and the Happy Model Selfly X, which weighs only 35.8 grams. It is, however, lighter than the Daton Cube, which weighs 67.3 grams, but you should note that this comparison is not very fair, since this is the 3 inch version of the Daton Cube. Setting up the quadcopter is very easy. All you have to do is to connect the micro USB port using a USB cable to your computer. You should note that when powering on the quadcopter, even through the USB port, the VTX turns on and you should always note that an antenna needs to be connected to the IPX connector and I also recommend to set the power output to 25 milliwatts when configuring the quadcopter on the bench because you don't want to burn the VTX. Then when you're all set, hit connect. You'll have to make sure that everything works properly under receiver. Under the configuration tab, you can configure the mode of the receiver. So this one features an integrated receiver. So you have to make sure that SPA RX support is chosen. If you'd like to bind your FRSky receiver on FRSky D8, FRSky D will need to be chosen. And if you want to set it to D16, you will need to select FRSky X. In addition, I changed the gyro update frequency and the PID loop frequency from 8 to 8 to 4 to 4, because now the CPU load is significantly lower. And when it was set initially to 8 and 8, the CPU load was at around 35%. Next, you need to select your modes. So you need to define an arm switch. I set my modes to horizon, air mode, and when it's set to in between, it's set to upper mode. I also recommend to configure the beeper and you have to make sure under configuration that the D shot beacon configuration is on. So you have to turn both switch to the right and you have to select the beacon tone and basically this is going to enable you to use the motors as beepers and this is important because this thing is pretty small and you don't want it to get lost in the middle of the field. Under OSD you can choose the elements that are going to be shown. I think that I only added the RSSI indication to the top left corner and you can simply rearrange your elements in order to fit your needs. Under CLI you can configure your VTX and you can also perform the bind procedure. First of all, if you have a flight controller with an integrated radio receiver, you can type bind underscore RX underscore SPI, then press enter, and then the receiver is going to be set to binding mode. And then you can simply hit bind on your remote controller in order to bind your remote controller with the built-in radio receiver. Another thing that I recommend to set is the VTX, so you won't have to scan for the correct channel. So you can type get VTX. Then over here, you can see all the related values. So right now the VTX frequency is 5740 and the VTX power is set to one. One stands for 25 milliwatts, two for 100 milliwatts and three for 200 milliwatts. If you'd like to set the VTX channel, for example, to channel number three, you can type set VTX channel equals three, enter, hit save. And now, as you can see, the VTX channel is set to 3 and the VTX frequency is 5780. Another small advice that I have for you is related to the battery Velcro strap. In case you feel that your battery is not properly secured, what I recommend you do is just to insert it in this manner and then flip the battery around. And as you can see, now it's better secured. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Happy Model Lava X using both HQ Prop and Emax Avanrush 2.5 inch propellers. The batteries that I used are the GNB 520mAh 2S and the Happy Model 300mAh 3S LHB batteries. The weight of the Lava X, including the 2S LHB battery, is 79.3 grams, and its weight, including the 3S LHB battery, is 76.6 grams. In terms of performance, I think that the Larva X performed great using both 2S and 3S LHB batteries and also using both types of propellers. However, I do think that it did a little bit better using the HQ Prop 
and the flight time were a little bit more extended using the Emacs Avant propellers. The average flight time that I got were about 4 minutes using the 3S 300mAh LHB battery and about 5 minutes using the GNB 520mAh 2S LHB battery. In addition, I can tell you that the onboard DVR is definitely a nice feature. It records the video at 720p 30 frames per second and as you're about to see, its quality is definitely higher than the video that was recorded on my HDO FED goggles. So overall, in my opinion, at the moment of shooting this video, the Happy Model Larva X is probably the best toothpick style micro brushless quadcopter that you can get. It's fun to fly, it's robust and not going to break easily, and it's suitable both for advanced and beginners. And as you're about to see, it flies very fast on 2S and flies like a rocket on 3S. The only downside that I find is that the built-in radio receiver is not great. It's pretty limited and the effective range is only about 150 meters. And if you are going to get this quadcopter, I highly recommend to get the versions with the external receiver and then you're going to be limited by the VTX and the range is going to be extended dramatically. Now I'm going to show you the flight footage and as always, if you have any questions about the Happy Model Larva X, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I will see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.